Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Last time, we defeated Adalwa and Goat again, so this time, we're moving on to the Great Bay Coast. Once again, let's climb up to the research lab and head inside. Using the fish I caught off screen, we have to feed the red fish in this aquarium. You got a piece of heart. You've collected two pieces so far. Collect two more to extend your life energy. That was actually extremely lucky. Basically, one of the red fish has to eat four of the smaller fish, but you could actually need up to seven at most because of that. Getting one fish to eat all four is like a 6% chance if my math is correct, so that was actually really impressive. Alright, let's equip the Zora Mask and the Hookshot and head outside. As we make our way back to the shore, it occurred to me that this is actually a lot easier in the 3S version because you can actually have 7 bottles, meaning you don't have to make a second trip in case you do need all 7 fish for that. Over here, we also have a minigame. Basically, you have to use the Zora Boomerang to break all of the jars in one throw. If you don't break them all, you actually have to pay this Zora money, so we're not going to play this minigame. Instead, we're going to go past that Zora to this area over here. We have a lot of cliffs, so let's try scaling them. Basically, we want to climb up here to get a little bit of extra height, and then use the hook shot, that is not the hook shot, um, to make it up to uh, this ledge here. We, we basically have to keep scaling up until we reach the top of that waterfall over there. Um, we also have a place to play the Scarecrow song, but to be honest, because we can use the hookshot on the trees, I'm not entirely sure why you would want to use the Scarecrow song here. Um, so yeah, overall this isn't, isn't too difficult. You got a red rupee, it's worth 20 rupees. That's pretty nice. And let's keep climbing. We're almost to the top, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's just over there, I think. You again? You can't fool me with your green clothes. You want an empty bottle, don't you? You never learn your lesson. 
Coo coo coo. Okay, I'll give you one. But only if you can swim through all the rings in the river in under two minutes. So do you want to try? There's a total of 20 rings. You must swim through them in the right order for it to count. Sw swim through the ring that's flashing. I'll show you the way, so follow me and don't get separated. Alright, we have to follow this beaver through all 20 rings, as described earlier. Overall, this isn't too difficult, but to be honest, it's actually been a while since I've played Majora's Mask 3D, and I wonder if this would actually be kind of difficult in that version because of the swimming changes, like having to use magic to swim at full speed, I wonder if the time limit would actually be a lot more strict um, because of not necessarily being able to swim as fast. Like, I wonder if they give you magic. I actually don't remember because it's been many, many years since I've actually played that version. But in this version, it's not too bad. Again, even swimming at a higher speed compared to that version, I do feel like it's pretty easy to get through here and not like lose control or miss rings. We do have to hop out of the water for that ring, uh, which is a little bit scary. So um, be careful not to accidentally like bonk on the ring, which will slow you down. You also have plenty of time to get through here. All right, so we are uh, down to the final five rings and we have almost a minute left. Uh, so that was actually pretty good. Yep, only three more to go after this, and we'll hopefully get our prize. Uh, that was perfect. That's not good. Did you call me, little brother? I called you, big brother. Actually... What? An empty bottle? Yeah, an empty bottle. Don't worry, little brother. T to us, empty bottles are a treasure. I can't give you one just because you beat my little brother. We can't just give you one. I'll give you one after you race once more against me. So will you try? The rolls are the same, but this time there are 25 rings. Don't fall behind. And now that we've gotten our bearings with the concept, uh, we now have a slightly tougher challenge. Not that this is terribly difficult, I do sometimes run into some troubles with this variation, uh, mostly because of bonking on rings, uh, like having to jump through them. But overall, this isn't too bad either. We could have gotten this bottle a lot earlier, um, but there is a reason why I didn't want to get it, and we'll see why after we get through uh, this next race. Um, but yeah, overall this isn't too bad. Again, two minutes is plenty of time to get through here, even with the additional rings that we kind of have to swerve around uh, to get through. So like, we are taking a slightly more roundabout path because of the rings, but overall uh, it's only five more, it's not that big of a difference. We have like two on the water here, um, and yeah, that was a case of bonking instead of jumping through gracefully. Uh, but again, luckily we have plenty of time, uh, so no harm done. And once again, we're, we're in the home stretch, uh, we're down to under 10 rings, so we have one more little curve here before uh, we reach the end once again, and we have over 40 seconds. Uh, so once again, uh, 2 minutes was a very generous amount of time for this.
He did it, little brother. Yeah, he did it, big brother. There's nothing we can do, little brother. This is a mess, big brother. You got an empty bottle. Save items in it and use them with C. We underestimated you. However, we are not done yet. Let's, uh, let's talk to them again. He's back, little brother. Yeah, he's back, big, big brother. But we don't have any more empty bottles, do we, little brother? No, we don't have any, big brother. If you say you still want to race, though, it's, uh, that's fine. What will you do? First, you have to start with my little brother. This time, the time limit is 150. Don't fall behind. Especially with the first race, having 10 fewer seconds should not pose a problem whatsoever. And this is why I didn't get this bottle earlier, because we actually have to race them twice, each. So, hypothetically, if we had gotten the bottle, that means to get the second reward, we'd actually have to race them um, 6 times in total, or 3 each, uh, instead of only 4 times in total. Again, which is why I put it off. Again, there's not really a point in having um, 6 bottles uh, for most things. Again, in the 3S version, having 7 bottles actually makes sense because in that case you can actually get all the Zora eggs without having to drop them off at the research lab first, and you can get all the fish for the heart piece uh, without having to like go back and get more fish. So yeah, in the 3S version, I feel like the high bottle count kind of makes sense, uh, but in this version, it's like, not enough bottles to do certain things, but also more bottles than you'll ever actually need. Uh, so yeah, it's actually a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting change in the 3S version. And again, in this version, for the most part, I actually think it's kind of overkill. Uh, but we're almost done with the uh, third race here. He did it again, little brother. He did it again, big brother. That's shameful, little brother. Now race me. What will you do? The time limit is the same as it was for my little brother, 150. But there are, there are 25 rings this time. Don't fall behind. By comparison, we actually might cut this race a little bit close. Uh, it, it shouldn't be too big of an issue though. Uh, we definitely finished with like 20 seconds remaining last time, so that's an extra like 10 seconds um, in case we mess up. And we did bonk once uh, last time, so yeah, we should be okay, but we can't um, get too careless here. Um, in general, I do find the structure of the Great Bay region in particular very odd, because again, the Snowhead region feels like it doesn't have much setup and uh, not many heart pieces in general. Uh, the Great Bay area actually has the second highest heart piece count after Clock Town, actually. Um, so yeah, we'll be here for a while, and with all the setup in Akana in this version, I get why they definitely moved some things around in the 3S version. Um, make it a little bit easier and quicker to get, to get through the, um, 
the region because again, it actually you spend a lot of time here, especially uh, when trying to get 100% and going after all the heart pieces. Uh, so actually, like moving the bottle so you don't have to go to Akana early, and moving the stone mask so you also don't have to go to Akana early. It kind of makes sense in a lot of ways. With uh, 30 seconds remaining, we have four more rings to go, so we should be uh, good to go. He's a formidable opponent, little brother. You all just talk, eh, big brother? If we give that to him, I wonder if he'll leave us alone, little brother. Yeah, I want to quit, big brother. You got a piece of heart. You've collected three pieces so far. Collect one more to extend your life energy. Please, let it be over. Alright, our next heart piece is actually at the bottom of this same waterfall. So let's dive in, and at the bottom we have more of these skeletal fish from earlier, um, along with a like-like. So let's use the Zora shield and try not to get uh, inhaled by the like-like on the way down. You got a piece of heart. You've assembled a new heart container. Your maximum life energy has been increased. And that's everything in this area for now. So let's swim back over to the surface since we can't use the ocarina underwater and we'll warp back to the coast. Next up is the heart piece we saw a long time ago in the Pirate's Fortress. Also, we have to rescue the seahorse again, uh, both from the fisherman and also the one in um, that's like uh, in the area with all the sea snakes. Uh, so we actually also need a picture of a pirate while we're there. Uh, on the way over there, I actually want to stop near these cliffs over here. I guess we can't use that water uh, in a bottle, uh, so instead we'll actually use the Song of Storms for something coming up later. Uh, but for now, let's actually scale this cliff here. Um, let's also avoid the like-likes nearby as we make our way up here. Uh, this is actually a very elaborate piece of heart that we're going after here. Uh, we have to chain together several hookshot targets here and make our way over to a magic bean spot by the next uh, hookshot target. Over here, we have an area that we can use the Scarecrow Song to reach.
You got a piece of heart. Collect four pieces of heart to assemble a new heart container. Each new container you put together will increase the amount of life energy you can have. Alright, let's re-equip the Zora mask and hop down. And let's swim back to the Pirate's Fortress. Let's mix things up this time. Instead of trying to swim, we're actually going to jump onto one of the boats I think I missed, actually, um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but with the stone mask, we don't have to worry about the pirates spotting us, at least. We do have to worry about the fish, though, uh, so that might be a problem. Um, at this point, we might as well just swim the rest of the way. Also, I guess we'll need the, um, the Goron's mask again in order to actually open the underwater entrance. I guess you can't swap items in the water also, which is interesting. Uh, so we'll have to wait until we get back to uh, try land. Alright, that definitely took longer than I'd hoped, but that wasn't too bad. Instead of going through the lower entrance, I actually want to hookshot over here and actually go inside the fortress again to get a picture of one of the pirates. Let's re-equip the stone mask and make our way back inside of the pirate's fortress. That is everything we need here, so let's head back outside and uh, make, our way, uh, make our way back to the lower entrance into the fortress. Let's sink down a little bit so it's harder for us to get detected, and once again, we have to carefully swim, hopefully avoiding the enemies uh, as we make our way over uh, to this giant entrance over here. Luckily, this heart piece isn't that far away from the entrance uh, to this underwater section, but we still have to go through this block pushing uh, part as an example. So let's move these out of the way and um, continue to break through these like boards here. And then I think we have to move this block out of the way. There are actually a couple ways to go through this, I'm pretty sure, and like different combinations of clearing a path. Um, so let's try this. If it doesn't work, we'll move things around and try again. Um, so yeah, we'll actually need to move this back over here and then go to the left path. But again, if you pull this block into the path to the left, you can also just go straight to the exit uh, from there. But this should work. Um, but, but yeah, it's a little bit more roundabout. Also, there was a treasure chest from earlier, but again, I'm not super concerned about rupees at this point, um, other than needing some to play mini games later on, but I think we have enough, uh, if memory serves. Uh, once again, we have these little currents that'll push us out, so let's actually walk along the surface with the mines, um, in order to avoid those. Now we can surface, 
and uh, go to the room with the uh, piece of art. We did pass by this one, and I think I talked about how to get it, but we didn't actually show it for obvious reasons. Um, there are a couple ways to get this one. Uh, one is to use the Gohan mask and try to carefully roll, the other is to use the bunny hood, uh, which I think is definitely going to be the easier of the two options. So let's equip the Gohan mask and the bunny hood. We do need the Guan Mask to at least punch through these barrels. And we have to race over there. You got a piece of heart. You've collected two pieces so far. Collect two more to extend your life energy. And that's everything in the Pirate's Fortress. Uh, so let's go back over to the Great Bay Coast. There's actually a couple more heart pieces around the beach, uh, so let's actually make our way over there again. Uh, we'll drop off the photo and rescue the seahorse a little bit later, but for now we actually have to go back to the swamp, uh, to the Oceanside Spider House. So yeah, there is actually a heart piece within this area, and we'll be starting with that next time. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask.